If you're getting deja vu, then that's perfectly justified because this is the second of these types of light that I've featured recently. The difference is that this one doesn't have the Autobot symbol in the bottom here. I don't think it's got the Autobot symbol. I think I'll just pull that right off and see if there's an Autobot symbol underneath. There, there's an Autobot symbol underneath. Well, that solves that. It's a different version. It has a little extra switch in the side and it has a Doppler radar detector inside so that it turns on when needed. I kind of prefer the Autobot symbol to, to that, he said, pulling a random circuit board in the sticky back. LED lighting, yeah, I definitely prefer the Autobot. They might be trying to avoid liability, though, having said that, the heat sink's not going to help there. So this one came from China. I ordered it on eBay. It cost, well, it actually cost uh, $19.99, I think. They've reduced the price slightly. And although it said standard speed pack from China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and it was estimated, well, actually, this must be the current time it would take, which is about right, because it only, it only took about 11 days for this to come through. Um, it's very fast. So let's plug this in and check it out. So I'll bring in the hoppy, the flickery hoppy, and we'll plug it in and go into a super flicker fest. And I'll get my Edison screw test socket, which is fetching pink. And I'll place it down the way. And we shall plug it in and see what results we get. So the unit is, it's rated, it's got text on it here, it says 60 watts, but in reality it's about 50 watts. So that's shared amongst the three. I noticed they're flickering. The last one didn't really look that flickery, did it? It's also got that detector, and you may have heard it click. The power has dropped down to just 0.7 watts, but the power factor in this instance is 0.4. Um, did the other one flicker? I'm trying to remember. Power factor is 0.4. What that basically means is that at 6 milliamps, 247 volts, hold on, 247 volts, 247 volts times 0 0.006 milliamps, even with the, uh, even if you're charged reactive power, it's only going to be 1.5 watts. This is good. I'm guessing from the fact there's a relay clicking inside that they've chosen the option of killing power to all the modules inside. Some of the other Doppler lamps, uh, they just shunt the power supply to turn it off. Now, note this 0.981 power factor, which is just awesome. That is a spectacularly good power factor. This could be getting a, a serious light. Let's open it. The timer on the Doppler detector is fixed at 20 seconds, but it does re-trigger. What this means is that if you're moving about, it will keep re-triggering and the light won't go off. But if you stop for 20 seconds, the light will go off. That is quite easy in a sort of house environment. In a garage, you'll also find the light goes off because uh, when you pause for thought, 20 seconds is not a long time, but perhaps that can be extended in here. Let's get these screws out. I notice that unlike the other light, this one has ventilation holes on top. This is good. This is an improvement because I thought it was pretty odd that it does have those fairly hot power supplies inside. The other one had three separate power supplies on one circuit board. But there was ventilation holes in the bottom, but not in the top. In hindsight, I should have paused while taking these screws out, but I didn't. You were just going to have to suffer the time. Why does it look slightly hazy? Have I, uh, is it hazy, the image? I don't think it is. I think it's just the angle I'm looking at the, the viewfinder from. The reveal. What's inside? Oh, look at that. It's three separate power supplies. That's very different to make room for the module on the bottom, which is a cased module by the look of it. So let's uh, pop that screw out. Is it a cased module? No, it's just a little plastic housing holding the Doppler detector, which has a... Uh, does that honestly have a little switch mode power supply by the look of it? Surely not. It's got a little inductor. It may have a little buck regulator. That must be why it's so... The power factor's so good. But here's the module. Here's the actual Doppler module with an LED in it, which is pointless because it's not going to be visible in there. 
I think we should explore inside one of these pieces of heat shrink sleeving. We have the incoming main supply, they're all just tacked off this power supply here. We have a bridge rectifier, we have a little uh, metal oxide virus to the look of it. Then it's going straight to the transformer, which is probably actually just an inductor. There's a little switch mode supply chip at that side. Which is, is this going to be another bright power chip? The other one was a, a bright power, I'm pretty sure. This one says, oh, it's not. 984YL905. V. P. Very crushed together at the end. So it looks like it's a standard little buck regulator which has come with these things. No proper separation ultimately, you know, the output is referenced to the mains. But having said that, although these are metal, as I mentioned in the previous video, that treats all these things, just always, it's better to treat everything as potentially being live and not put, not handle these lights while the power's on, which is a bit awkward because you're kind of shaping them, you're shuffling the, the sort of angle of the light, but you're relying on the separation in here of that little shim of fiberglass with the LEDs in it between that and the aluminium. So I suppose ultimately, you know, there is always that slight risk. People have had electric shocks off similar styles of lights. The power from the switch goes to the... and it switches, it, the power goes to the uh, unit here and switches either to the outputs or it switches to the power of this unit. That's how they're doing the on-off sort of situ situation. I thought they might have just bypassed this but they appear to be powering it off completely. Interesting. So they get generous ventilation holes at the bottom and they've got the ventilation holes at the top, so there is going to be airflow through this. Right, the next thing I'm going to do, as with the last one, I'm going to take this off and see what it's like underneath. See, the last one had the tiniest little dab of heat sink compound. Now, someone said, why don't you say thermal paste? Okay, thermal paste. Uh, the reason I say heat sink compound instead of thermal paste is because in the UK, it says Servisol heat sink compound, but thermal paste is good too. I'm going to pause momentarily while I find a suitable screwdriver and I'll yank one of these off. Maybe I won't because the screen's crashed. Uh-oh. Oh, it has. It's done that thing again. That's annoying. <sighs> right, tell you what then. Uh, the, the phone is, uh, it's doing that... Uh, it's doing that Lenovo thing that they must have a new model out or something like that. The last update is the one of death. Right, well, you suffer screen freezing at a phone. Time to get the next phone then for recording. Let's see if we can find something that's going to fit in here and I'll just bludgeon on. This is probably not the correct bit, but I'm just going to use it anyway. I was going to focus down onto this, but the screen is not focusing down. The screen is not responding at all. It's done this a few times recently, including from cold, so it's, a, it's not a thermal issue with the device. That is the wrong bit. I should be more professional than this. But then you know me. Not very professional at all. Is this a better sized bit? No. Oh, this is all going horribly wrong. It was so promising. It was going so well. It's also gone past the stage of recovery, of being able to start again. That's quite annoying. Let's try that one. Oh, that was, that's working. And then uh, if the screen has frozen and it doesn't unfreeze and I can't find a way of... I found before when the screen froze when I stopped it by using the button the side to basically just uh, the on off button it just corrupted the file so I'm not going to do that what I shall do if it's going to do this thing again is I shall just wait until it goes into the next section of 30 minutes then I'll just uh, and start recording again then I'll stop and that means the original file will be intact okay 
Let's see if I can get this out. It's a bit tricky because it's a very close fit. I hope that these little circuit boards become available as spares. That'd be nice that if this light was truly serviceable. They've used more thermal paste on the back of this. This is good. Uh, right. It's interesting how they've got the little seal around here as if they intended these to be waterproof. That, you know, they've got the little dam here that they could put a seal in. But um, they've got ventilation in the plastic cover here. So that's, you know, that would defeat the waterproofing anyway. It's good that they've got airflow in here. The last one I checked, which had a similar power, didn't actually get too hot. I was very impressed by that. There are other versions of this light, though, that have a similar style, but they've got really wide arrays of LEDs, but they're rated the same power. So theoretically, those ones are going to stay cooler because they've just got a larger surface here and the LEDs aren't being run quite so hard. Because LEDs, if I recall correctly, were in pairs. I could have measured the voltage across this one, but I could measure the voltage by probing about inside. Is this wise? Yes, it is. We'll do that. I shall screw this back on. Now that I've got plenty of time since the screen has frozen. Still frozen? Yeah, screen is still frozen. Oh, that is so annoying. Right, that's back on, and that clamps the the printed circuit board back in here. So what I want to do is I pulled one of these sleeves off before. I shall pull it off just to expose, if I can, the output to this. Is there one that's going to be a bit more generous? Yes, this one should be a little tad more generous. Or is it? I can't remember which one I did here. This one looks the loosest. This one should slide back. And then I'll connect it to the mains and try not to short things out and blow it up. That should reveal the pads nicely. And we'll measure the voltage across that. There are, for reference, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 6. That's 48 LEDs. Right, too much loose metal around here, so I'll stuff the little Doppler radar thing back in there out the way. Yeah. I shall get the shock it. I shall get the meter ready. I shall turn it apprehensively to about 200 volts DC. Yeah, that sounds about right. So where am I going here? I'm going down to this. Let's see. This is where I think I've got everything well clear of live shorty bits. And I plug it in, there's a massive bang. That sometimes happens. That's part and parcel of stuff like this. Let's also bypass the switch. So, yeah, I think that's... Uh, actually, I'm going to have to turn that around. That is very close to the contacts, the back of that switch. Right. Will it go bang? It's clicked. It's on. I would say it's still running on the Doppler unit, but let's uh, test the voltage here. Bring the meter in. The meter says, oh. I'm trying to not push this module down into the metal here. Yeah, I'm not making a good connection because I'm kind of worried about shorting it out. 71 volts. So 71 volts divided by 3. Let's unplug that. Saying 3 volts per LED. 71 volts divided by about 3 volts is 23.624. It is pairs. So the 48 LEDs are in pairs again. Uh, I could theoretically also have kind of clamped that. Will I try clamping that with a clamp meter? I could try clamping that with a clamp meter and we'll see the current going through it. Hold on. Clamp meter. Little DC clamp meter. So I shall set that to 2 amps. I shall select DC. I shall null it out. And we'll plug it in and see what happens. Is this all clear? It's showing about 200 milliamps, fairly accurate 200 milliamps. So that's 100 milliamps through each of those LEDs. 
uh, which given their size, it's quite a lot, but having said that, how's that going to go, I wonder? They're kind of almost like 2835 type LEDs, they're not that big. But 100 milliamps, that's about 0.3 watts per LED, which I think is fairly typical for that size of LED. Okay, okay, so that's more or less it. I will just patiently wait for the for this video to roll over 30 minutes, which is another 15 minutes away, and then I'll crop it down afterwards because I don't think I'm going to be able to stop this. I'm going to hit the stop button. No, the phone has decided it's not going to play. Oh, joy. Right here. Well, I'll just kind of, uh, it's quite odd. It's never quite happened this way before, so I'll just vaguely say another smart light. I uh, quite like this. Looks like it's been a module. The enclosure does look like it's, you know, designed to have the case put over it, but in this case, they've removed that and it sits down into this recess here, which is interesting because it also takes it down below these uh, metal frames, possibly just to use that space that was available and also for the, their screening effect. Uh, and I'm really surprised that it's got what does, to all intents and purposes, appear to be a tiny little switch mode supply on it, which make, gives it a better power factor and maybe makes it smaller because it's not using the big capacitive dropper type arrangement. Not that it takes a huge amount of current to operate that relay. What is the voltage rating in the relay? Because having said that, some of these are rated things like 125 volts, you could probably see it better than I can. Oh, 10 amps, 125 volts. That's nice. It's, so it's a 12 volt relay and it's rated for 10 amps, at 125 volts AC. It doesn't have a 240 volt AC rating, despite the fact that this whole fixture goes up higher. So uh, hopefully that's not going to be an issue. It is a fairly low load, but it does suggest the separation, the contact isn't going to be great. Oh, that's a bit of a... A downside, there's also a bit of a splash of soda on the circuit board down there. I don't think it's really a major issue, but it's just one of those little messy manufacturing moments. And loads of component positions here as if they've left themselves open. Oh right, that's for an LDR option here as well, which wouldn't really work to. It doesn't have an LDR option. Uh, certainly the black plastic wouldn't help there. Okay, well that's a, it's an interesting approach to it. It certainly works. It detects you any movement within the vicinity and it stick, it stays on from the last movement for about 20 seconds, which is okay. But could, technically speaking, depending on the chip that's using this, it could probably, oh, it's a B, BISS0001 probably looking in the back of that. Or is it? Is that a different one? I'm going to bend it down. I'm going to bend that down and regret that horribly. Uh, let's see what that chip is. It is reminiscent. It's maybe a bit shorter than BISS0001. Oh, it's not. It's a F5701. Do we recognise that as a detector chip? I'm going to go and look that up now. F5701. I'm just going to note that down. F5701. And if I find anything about that chip... I shall leave it in the description down below. So that's it. Interesting little device. Uh, pretty much what you'd expect. Oh, it's got another little chip there, a little facility for the chip. I'm guessing that it is designed to work with a different passive infrared type chip or a, a PIR. Interesting. It looks like a fairly universal little module. But there we go, that's not the bit we're interested in anyway. We're interested in this light and its Autobot functionality. So there we go. That's it.